earlier tonight, armed guards picked up $1 million in cash from a secret vault. It was transported under maximum security to our protected set, where the entire million will be handed over to one couple. Their challenge? Hang on to it through the most heart-pounding game ever imagined. I'm Kevin Pollack, and this is the Million Dollar Money Drop. in genuine American currency. 50 bundles of $20 bills, each bundle $20,000. On previous shows, you've seen a lot of people come out here and try to stop the drop. Well, tonight, for the very first time, it's your turn. You get to play along at home in a million dollar money drop special event. Visit Fox.com to play along live with our contestants and see if you have what it takes to stop the drop. You ready to meet America's newest millionaires? Please welcome Jennifer and David Belsky. All right, tell us a little about yourself. Well, we've been uh, married for two years. Right. Um, we only dated for three weeks, and uh, I, we just knew. Um, and uh, we eloped. Uh, after three weeks, after you eloped. After three weeks, three weeks we, eloped. we weren't even living together. Wow. So now we live in a small apartment with a dog, a cat, and we have a five-month-old baby. Oh, yes. nice. Well, Austin. So what's the plans with the money? We are going to buy a dream house. We need we need more space. All right. We, have, we need a lot more space. Well, here you start out winners because this million dollars, as of right now, is yours. Wow! Oh my god! Oh my god! The question is, how long can you hang on to it? In order to do that, you're going to have to give us the correct answers to seven multiple choice questions. Each of these four drops will represent a possible answer to those questions, only one of which is the correct answer. Now, the rules are very simple. You must risk all of your money on every single question. But if you're not certain of the answer, you can play it safe and place your money on more than one drop. However, you must always leave one drop clear. Put your money on the wrong answer, and it drops. It's gone forever. Whatever money you have left over at the end of the seven questions is yours to keep. Are you ready? Yeah! All right. You've got one million dollars. I've got seven what? questions. Let's play the million dollar money drop. The two categories for your first question are Wizard of Oz, comic books, talk it over. I don't know anything about comic books. Anything about Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz? Yes, we got okay. it. Okay. The four like possible that. answers are A, Munchkin, B, Toto, C, Glinda, and D, the Scarecrow. All right? Once you see the question, you'll be able to talk about it, and then we'll give you 60 seconds to put all your money down. And the question is... In the movie, The Wizard of Oz, who was Dorothy talking to when she said, I've got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore? It Talk it over. Movie, the Wizard of Oz. I have a feeling we're not who in Kansas Dorothy anymore. Toto? To when she said, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Let's Toto? The, that was, that was her dog, wasn't it? Toto that was, was her dog. dog. Oh I have my a feeling God, we're not in Kansas a... anymore, Glinda. 60 no. seconds on the clock. Do you know, Glinda Do you know yet? who Munch Glinda is? Do you know who Glinda is? Was Glinda that one of the witches? The yeah, it was, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. It wasn't the Scarecrow. She didn't yeah, get the Scarecrow yet. We're not in Kansas anymore, yeah. Scarecrow. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you're right, Toto. We gotta hurry up here. There's a lot of money here. Jeez. Over. Oh my gosh. I, I'm really, I really like this answer. I really if like you're this answer. certain, be bold. Put it all on one. Wizard of Oz for so I'm long. I'm not in Kansas anymore. But... Toto, the more I say it, the more yes. good I feel about it. I feel great about it. I feel great. I feel great. Yes! That's it! That's it! We're done! You want to stop the clock? We're done! We're done! All right! In the movie The Wizard of Oz, who was Dorothy talking to when she said, I've got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore? Your choices were A, Munchkin. You've got no money there. You put one 
million dollars on B. Toto. C. Glinda, nothing. And D. The Scarecrow, also nothing. Yes. Now, I've got to tell you, during the first six questions, you will have an opportunity to do what we call the quick change. When you ask for it, we'll give you an additional 30 seconds to move your money. But remember, you can use quick change only once and only in the first six questions. Well, we're going to save it. Yeah, we're going to save it for another question. Later. It's time to step up and see what drops. In the movie The Wizard of Oz, who was Dorothy talking to when she said, I've got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore? Good luck. a lot of money to move around, as you saw. Congratulations. Yes. All right, let's take a look at the two categories for question number two. Sports equipment, Tom Hanks films. Talk it over. I know a lot about sports equipment. How many Tom Hanks movies do you know of? I know a lot. Do you want sports equipment? Uh, I do. Okay, I want sports, sports equipment. equipment. I want sports equipment. Well, we're going to go for sports equipment. Sports, sports equipment? equipment? Yes. Yeah. All, all right. Sports equipment. This is all on him, though. All on him. No pressure. The four possible answers are A, NBA basketball, B, NFL football, C, MLB baseball, and D, NHL hockey puck. And the question is, which of these is the heaviest? Talk it over. OK, I am going to rule out basketball. Yeah, I would say if it's the biggest. It's the most obvious answer. I have never felt a hockey puck, have you? I have not felt a hockey I puck. I would say But it smashes gut, things. My gut is a hockey puck. 60 is seconds it? on the I clock, and it's moving now. Our money okay. to hockey puck. Um, I, I don't think it's the, the football, because again, that's full of air. So it's either the baseball or the hockey puck. The baseball is pretty solid, though. The baseball, I mean, it's not like it's full of air. It's a bunch of layers of twine in there. So let's put some there for, for right now, OK? Um, 40 seconds, a lot of money to move. Have you ever felt a hockey puck, though? I've never felt a hockey puck. Have you? No. 35 seconds. Well, we're moving all of our money. OK, so think about what a football feels like. You played football. What does a football it's, feel it's like? It's light. It's light. You can is it lighter than far. a basketball? Yes. One of these two is definitely the heaviest. OK. Um, Okay. When you're unsure, play it safe. Wow. What do you want me to put it on? What do you want me to put it on? We have 320,000 on a base. Okay, seconds. Rock, paper, scissors. No. 520,000 on a hockey puck? Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Okay. Wow. Time's up. Which of these is the heaviest? You've got nothing on a football and nothing on a basketball. You've got $400,000 on the Major League Baseball. You've got $600,000 on a hockey puck. I don't know. I mean, I feel like baseball is the correct answer. You do? But you felt like hockey puck is the correct answer. But I'm just picturing when they drop the puck right when the game starts, it feels like it just hits the ice, and it has to have some weight to it. I remind you. You have that quick change opportunity. I say we just keep it as it is. I keep it as what it do is. you say? I say we keep it as it is. No quick change. No quick change. All right, let's step up and see what drops. <laughs> Which of these is the heaviest? If it's A or B, we're done. If it's C, Major League Baseball, you've got $400,000 going into question three. And if it's the hockey puck, you've got $600,000 into question three. Good luck. Ah, oh, Jennifer and David. I am so sorry. The baseball is five ounces. The football is 14 ounces. Five and a half ounces is the hockey puck. Basketball was the correct answer. It was 20 ounces. I'm so sorry. Jennifer and David, let's hear it for them. Thank you, guys. We have two more contestants for you. Let's please hope that they can somehow stop the drop, all right? Please welcome best friends, 
Alan Pierre and Steve Luther. a little bit about yourselves, please. We're both from St. Louis, um, moved out to LA, and we reconnected over uh, trivia nights. We love to go to trivia every yeah. Tuesday night. So first, we were going to Hooters trivia night, but it wasn't challenging enough. Yeah. So then we went to another place, but the questions weren't challenging enough again. We kept dominating it every trivia night that we went to. So we keep looking for a bigger challenge. So we're here tonight for the biggest challenge of all. And we're going to stop the draw. While all of that is unbelievably impressive, I have to ask the question that's on the minds of most people watching now. You went to Hooters for trivia night. <laughs> There's also very good wings there. I see, all right. <laughs> good answer. Well, congratulations. You've got a million dollars. I've got seven questions. Let's play the million dollar money drop. Let's look at the categories for question number one. They are rock stars, soup. All right. I know a lot of rock music. We always do really well with we the music. We do well with music categories of trivia. And we're doing rock stars. Rock stars, rock stars it is. All right. Four possible answers are A, Axl Rose, B, Ozzy Osbourne, okay. C, Black Sabbath, Tommy Lee, and D, crew, drummer. John Bon Jovi. Okay, we got lead singer. And okay. the question is, as of December 2010, which of these hard rockers is currently eligible for full membership in the AARP? All right, talk it over. We got to think about who's the oldest. I know Ozzy's been around. He's been around since the Ozzy's 60s. Ozzy's been around for a really long okay. time. Okay, okay. Axl Rose, 60 seconds, in the go. 90s, okay? I think we start putting money on Ozzy right yes. now. We know he's an option. Definitely, he's one okay. of the oldest. Yeah, we got it, we got it. Um, 50 seconds, what do we want a lot to of money to move. What can we eliminate right now? Can we eliminate I would say Tommy Lee? I think he's younger than John Bon Jovi. I think he's younger than Ozzy Osbourne, too. Yes. So 40 seconds. By the way, we're sure that AARP is for old people, right? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. AARP is for old people. Yeah. You gotta move your money, 30 seconds. Are we putting it all on Ozzy right now? What about John Bon Jovi? John Bon Jovi's pretty old, but think, think about it, he was popular 25 in 25 seconds, a lot of money still but in play. Don't you think that we want to hedge some on John Bon Jovi? 20 seconds. Think we should? At least some, because if we're wrong, it's over. All right, all right, 100,000. We'll just put that. That 80. 80's all I'm willing to do. Stack it up. All right, time's up. Come on over, guys. Woo. All right. The question again, as of December 2010, which of these hard rockers is currently eligible for full membership in the AARP? You've got no money on Axl Rose. You've got $920,000 on Ozzy Osbourne. You've got no money on Tommy Lee. And you put a little insurance, $80,000 on John Bon Jovi. I have to ask you now if you would like to use your quick change. I think we save it for when we need it more. I agree. No? No. We're sticking with our decision. All right, Stay let's step up and see what drops. All right. Alan and Steve putting those Hooters honed talents to the test. are playing bold and it's paying off. If you want to play along live at home, it's not too late. Just go to fox.com. All right, let's take a look at the categories. For question number two, six questions remaining. Academy Awards, pop music. Okay, I 
I feel like Academy Awards is going to be our strength. We're two movie we're lovers. We're going Academy Awards. Academy Awards. Academy Awards. Four possible answers are A, the star of Father of the Bride. Star of the Father of the Bride. Steve B, Martin. the star of X Men Origins, Wolverine. Jack. Hugh Jackman. C, the star of City Slicker. Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. And D, star of Sister Act. Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg. And the okay. question is. Of these four performers, who has hosted the Academy Awards the most times? So Talk it over. All right. The most times. The first, the, one, the first one we can eliminate is Hugh Jackman. Definitely. I know he's only hosted seconds. once, maybe twice. Um, Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, I know that her and hers Billy was Crystal. Clock is she, moving. She had the longest Academy Awards of anyone, and they never brought her back again. 50 so seconds. she's out. Those two are out. Okay, we're going to start moving some Steve money. Martin. I, Steve Martin has done it many times, and he also did it with Alec Baldwin. Move some money, fellas. we got to start moving money. Okay. How much do you want to put on... How much do you want to put on... Uh, Billy Crystal. Keep moving Keep that money. Mark. 30 seconds, that's all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how much How much do you want to hedge? Um, I feel like you, this is our strongest answer. You think that answer. that's the strongest yes, answer? Yes, I do. Okay, then we're going to go here. We're going to start putting seconds. it here. Are you sure you want to hedge all of that? <laughs> no, okay. So we're going to move it over to Steve Martin. But Billy Crystal has also done it so many He's times. He's hosted so many times. Throw a couple more on there. <laughs> All right. Oh. Time is up. You've made your selections of these four performers who has hosted the Academy Awards the most times. The kings of trivia have put $820,000 on the star of The Father of the Bride, which you believe to be? Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Star of the X-Men Origins, Wolverine, you've got no money. That is? Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Jackman. Star of the City Slickers, $100,000. You said that was? Billy, Billy Crystal. Crystal. And I believe you said the star of the Sister Act, Whoopi Goldberg, no money on that drop. Why so much money on Steve Martin, $820,000? He certainly hosted at least three times, I think. Yes. And I only know of two times that Billy Crystal's hosted, but he may have hosted in other times that I can't remember. So you got yeah. yourself some insurance of $100,000 there. And I'm wondering if we want to up our insurance. You got one quick change opportunity only in the first six questions. Do you want to use it now? What do you think? I'm leaning toward using it. We want to use a quick change. 30 seconds on the clock. Ready? All right, I have 30 half seconds. Half Go! Let's put at least... At least uh, 300 on here. Okay, we're gonna put at least 300. 20 You're seconds. Right. It's going fast, fellas. Whoa. 300. Okay, we're on, we're at 300. All right. Ah. Uh, we sure? We sure we don't want to move any of it back? What do you think? This is 300,000. That's 300,000 dollars. I know. Uh, I think we're good. We're good. We're good. You used your one quick change opportunity. Now you have $300,000 on who you uh, believe to be Billy Crystal. $620,000 on answer A, which you believe to be? Steve Martin. Then it's time to step up and see what drops. Here we go. Okay. So we're hoping for A. We're hoping for A. Feel good about it. The good news is you're definitely moving on All right. yeah. to question three. Yes, that's good. That's good. All right. You're moving on with 300 or 620. Either way, you're about to lose a tremendous amount of money. Uh, I encourage you to brace yourselves for that loss. is gone. You used it perfectly. Ah. Billy Crystal hosted eight times. Steve Martin only three times. You still have $300,000. Come back and see how well they do with five remaining questions and $300,000 here on the Million Dollar Money Drop. Alan and Steve 
have $300,000. How about all of you playing along live at Fox.com? How much have you hung on to? Five questions remain. Here are your categories for question three. NASCAR movies. All right, well, I've never watched a NASCAR you know what we once in my life. We gotta redeem ourselves on movies. Yes, we're gonna redeem movies. ourselves on movies. Movies. Yes. Yes. All right. We're gonna get this. Yeah. We got it. Four possible answers are A. All right. All right. Milk. And milk. B. Beautiful Mind, C. Both Academy Award winners so far. The Blind Side, also or D, Up in the Air. And the question is, okay. which of these major motion pictures is based on a work of fiction? Talk of it over. Fiction. Okay, so start with Milk. Milk Harvey is based Milk. on the life of Harvey Milk. Real person, but it could have been based on a Block fictional account started. of his life. Keep that in mind. Okay. Beautiful Mind, is based on the life of uh, uh, that mathematician guy. guy. But that's Russell Crowe. I think that's not it. I, think I don't that's think that's based. One. Yes. Blindside is definitely about Michael Orr. Left tackle. That's out. It was a Michael Lewis book. Up in the air is an original screenplay written by. Uh, uh, it was a. It was movie. Right. No, it was an so, original screenplay. It was based we got. We got to start moving. What do you want to do? Based on a work of fiction, I think it's up in the air. Okay. Which of these major motion pictures is based on a work? Was of it based fiction? on a book? Do you think? Is that what you're saying? Thirty seconds. Yes. Are because... we putting it all on there? Yes. All We're right. putting it all on there. We're keeping all the money. <laughs> We're going. Are you sure? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. OK. Book. You think it's a book? I think it, I'm pretty sure it's a book. A I short feel like story, I, heard, I think. A short story. A short something story that about, was adapted. Yes, because I, I think I right. heard the guy talking right. about it. We know. Real. 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 Real person. Real. Real. Let's do it. Let's this do is it. Fiction. Let's this do is fiction. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Nicely done. Which one of these major motion pictures is based on a work of fiction? You focused on which of these are real? Milk, A, you believe to be? Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk, his it's life a... story. B, A Beautiful Mind, based on? Uh, John Nash is his name, the mathematician. Yeah. C, The Blind Side. Definitely based on a nonfiction book by Michael, uh, Michael Lewis. And D, Up in the Air? Up in the Air is definitely a work of fiction. Yes. I'm going with you, buddy. We're going all in. Stay, stay with me. We're, we're in. in. We're, we're in. in. We've got all in here. situation. No more quick change opportunity. It's nope. time to step up and see what drops. This is it. Come on. Good luck. to the fourth question, so we're going to change things up a little bit. We've lost one of the drops. All right. All right. Okay? okay? The rules remain the same. You have to risk all your money on every question, and you've got to leave one drop clear. We're going to add a little time to the clock, give you 75 seconds. You ready? We're ready. We Here are we ready. Let's do this. Do it. Let's get this. Categories for question four are deadly animals, U.S. cities. Okay. Thanks. I think I know U.S. cities. I know geography. The makeup and stuff like that. And you know history. I like it. I got history. history. You got you geography. You want to do it? Yes. U U U.S. cities. cities. All right. U.S. cities. U.S. cities. The three possible answers are A, Detroit. B, Detroit. I was born there. Nice. Washington, D.C. I went there a couple weeks ago. All right. And C, New York City. I've never been there. I've been to New York. The I've question heard of it. is, in terms of violent crime, what did Forbes name America's most dangerous city in 2009? Talk it over quickly. Violent crimes. We're talking about homicides. We're talking about serious crimes, OK? OK. What jumps out at me is DC. OK, why? Tell me why. 75 seconds, heard, go. My friends who live there say that they've heard about a huge crime wave happening there every now and then. They say that they've heard that there's a lot of problems. They hear violent stories every day. You're talking about violent crimes? You're talking about, like, murder? Violent crimes. Those Murders. Yes, because violent crime. Detroit's got a lot of violent crime, too. We got a lot of unemployment in Detroit right now because of the auto industry being bad. True, but, but I haven't heard much bad violent. stuff about Detroit. I hear bad things about 50 DC. 50 seconds. Right, let's I'm start pretty sure about it. So how much do you want to hedge anything on New York City? So you, we're ruling out Detroit? You think it'd be Detroit over... You think it'd be 40 seconds. I feel like this is, our, this is our main, this is our okay, main so target right now. This is our main target. So let's put it on, and then let's decide. Okay. 30 seconds. All right. 
You have 30 seconds, okay. 30 seconds. The crime that's gonna be happening here. I understand what you're saying about the auto industry, but have do you have anything to go on other than just the clock is ticking. What 20 seconds? Assuming about the auto industry. Yeah, you know, no, like, I just know it's a depressed know, area. Yeah, I there's gonna be a lot of crime. I know but if you've heard point. that there's crime here, I feel good I've about it. I've heard that there's a lot of crime. Do you want to hedge? Do you want to hedge? Because we gotta do it now. Eight, seven, hedge two stacks? Two stacks. Five, two stacks will hedge. Three, two, We're good. Five, All right. Five, All right. Two stacks. In the closing seconds, Alan and Steve has decided to hedge, as they put it, with two stacks. $40,000 now on Detroit. B, Washington, D.C., the bulk of your money, $260,000. Yeah. And C, New York City, no money. It's time to step up and see what drops. We want to see this one yeah. drop. You more than want to see that one drop. No matter what, you're moving on with $260,000 or $40,000. Come right back on the million dollar money drop. We're each taking home those two stacks. Welcome back to the million dollar money drop. Alan and Steve, we're alive. Reason to celebrate. No matter what, you're moving on to the fifth question. Yes. We're moving on to the next question. We're moving on, we're moving on. Come on. We want to see Come Detroit on. drop. Come on, Detroit. The question again in terms of violent crime. What did Forbes name America's most dangerous city in 2009? The correct answer here, one of these two. The other two, including the one that dropped, New York City, not even in the top 15. Wow. I'm glad we didn't pick it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's time to see what dropped. $260,000 moving forward or $40,000 moving forward? $260,000 gone. But they're still alive yeah. with $40,000. Still alive! Still alive! We're taking all the That's rest! Right. At this point, you gotta get through three questions. All right. All right. Here we go. Question number five, two categories. They are Costco, hygiene. All right. I've gone to Costco. I don't know a lot about it. I don't shop at Costco. Business model. Hygiene's broader. It gives us a little more movement. Hygiene is very move. broad, but I've never been to a Costco. Never been? Never been. Well, let's go with something we both can do, all right? We're going to go hygiene. Going hygiene. Going hygiene. Hygiene it is. Going hygiene. Three possible Come answers on. are A, changing a diaper. Changing a diaper. OK, B, I've never done that. Using the bathroom at home. Or C, all right. coughing or sneezing. And the question is, according to a Harris Interactive survey, a greater percentage of people wash their hands after doing which activity? Talk it over quickly. OK. Wash their hands after doing which of these three activities? Clock is moving. According to a Harris survey. OK. We got to leave one blank. What do we want to eliminate? 70 I'm seconds. Changing a diaper. Clock is and moving. I'm, the reason I'm going to give you is because a lot of time it's not done in the bathroom. A lot of time it's done, you know, in another place, right? True. And so you do it, you do it, you don't need to wash seconds. your hands necessarily. True, but a lot of people, I feel like if they're at home, they're using the bathroom, maybe they're trying to run back to the TV, watch Million Dollar Money Drop, right. they may nice. not have time. Nice. Nice. They may not think to wash their hands. They may not think to. OK, I do, but I see where you're coming from. And okay. coughing or sneezing happens all the time. 40 seconds. It, happens it can happen time. anywhere. So do you want to, I think we should eliminate C, because people take... sneeze and cough everywhere. They don't always have yeah. access. It's true. I cough and sneeze all the time, and I don't wash my hands almost ever after 30 this. seconds. OK, you're right. You're right, let's take it. Hey, oh, come on, it's into the arm. All right, 20 seconds. here we go. All right. all right. We gotta decide. What do we want to go with? Or do we want to head? in the bathroom at home. We can do this. We got 18 seconds. So you think it's changing the diaper? I think it's less likely that it's this. I think it's more likely using the bathroom at home, personally. 
Running out of time. Sink is right there. Sink is right there. Should we go? Should we go? Let's do it. Let's go. Wait, wait. I'm going the other way. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. That you was interesting. Me, buddy. Right. I was just playing a trick on you. You scared me. Just making sure you're winning. In the last <laughs> second, you moved all your money, the 40000 from really? changing a diaper through a miscommunication, it appeared, <laughs> to using the bathroom at home. All right, $40,000, that's what you've got. Let's All step right. up and see what drops. Here you go, brother. Come on! Ready? Yeah. All right! Down to two, all or nothing, $40,000 on using the bathroom at home. Can you hold on one more time? Let's find yes. out. Yes. yes! 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 We can stay on one more time. We Come on. on. Change it to Come, Come on. on now. Come on. Come on. Good luck. Okay, we're gonna add some time to the clock. You're gonna have 90 seconds. 90 right. seconds. Good, more Good. time. We can do it. Keep in mind, whatever you hold on to through this question, that's the amount you have a chance to take home. Are you ready? Ready. We are ready. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. The categories for question six, they are classic sitcoms, billionaires. I know. How are you on classic sitcoms? I wanna do sitcoms. Television is my thing. It is your thing. Let's do it. I know television will go classic, classic sitcoms. Classic sitcoms. Classic sitcoms. Here we go. The three possible answers are A, Friends, B, Everybody Loves Raymond, or C, Seinfeld. Huge and fans. the question Excellent. is, when it aired, which of these series finales was watched by more Americans? Talk it over. I think that it was Seinfeld. I watched both of these finales. 90 seconds. When they aired. I watched this in college. I remember it. I watched it with my roommates, and I remember it being huge, like 80 it was million. Very huge. I'm, there were so many stories about how huge it was, but I don't remember. 75 if it broke. Seconds. It didn't break match. It didn't break the match record. Match was number one. Match was number one. 106 million. Okay. Do we have something? Do you have any sense of what the number is here? I don't remember, it was so long ago. Okay, what do you feel about Everybody Loves Raymond? I feel like of these seconds. three, it's the one I'm least inclined to put money on. I agree, Maybe but I don't show. think that it had the cult following that Seinfeld and Friends did. I, th I think you're right, I think you're right. I'm saying about 80 million here, that's my recollection from when it happened. And I remember, like I said, I watched it. 40 seconds. This I know, was it was huge. Deal. I it feel was like huge. this was, both of these was like the world tuned in to watch. Okay, we still got 30 seconds, we can we figure this seconds. out. Okay. We're talking about the number. We're talking about. Do you remember when hearing about Friends breaking any records, though? Because it would have, if it broke any records, it could have beaten Seinfeld. I don't remember seconds. hearing that. I don't remember hearing that. You think we should go for Seinfeld? Yes. All right. I think we should go for Seinfeld. Five, eight, seven, Are we sure? Six, five, Not sure, four, but I think so. Are we sure enough? We're sure enough. All right, let's do it. After much debate, we finally decided, friends, no money. Everybody loves Raymond, no money. It's all on Seinfeld. Go we'll big win. or go home. That's the only way to play. I got to agree with Steve. I got to agree with Steve. Let's step up and see right. what drops. One down, 
One down. I can tell you 33 million people watch the series finale of Everybody Loves Raymond. Okay. I can tell you that within the two remaining answers, one of them was just over 50 million, and the other one, 76 million and change. Oh. You said Friends is about 80 million. That's my recollection, which seems pretty close to 76 million. Disturbingly close. Disturbingly. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're wrong for the right reason. <laughs> Be wrong! Be wrong! Come on, baby. Let's step up and see what drops, fellas. Oh, come on! Come on! Down to two possible answers. Friends, game's over. Seinfeld, they've made it to the seventh final question. Question seven. Oh, For the last three questions straight, you have held on to $40,000. Yeah! It's been an amazing ride, and I hope all of you playing along live at Fox.com have hung on to the end. But for Alan and Steve, this $40,000 is the amount they could be taking home. All right, a couple of changes for you guys. There are now only two drops. You must continue to risk all the money, and you must also leave one drop clear. It's an all or nothing situation. That pesky clock, gone. Nice. All right. Nice. All right. Nice. I like that. I love Take it. Take all the time you need. All right. Question seven, all or nothing. The categories are pets in the mail. What do you think? I'm thinking the mail. You think mail? So what were you thinking? I was thinking pets. I want to go mail, but I want all you right. with me. I want I'm you with you. With I'm with you. Let's do We're it. We're doing mail. In All the right. mail. We're doing the mail. All right. The two possible answers for the final question are A, a day in December, or B, a day in April. OK. And the question is, in 2009, what was the busiest mailing day for the US post office? Talk it over. Busiest Biggest. mailing day right. for the U.S. Post Office. So our we day, got our holidays. Our day in December. We got all the holidays in December. And a day in April, we got taxes. Tax day. Taxes. That's a huge, I, huge day. I, that was what I immediately gravitated towards. As soon as I saw it, I thought of taxes. And I went to the post office this year on tax day. You did. And it was ridiculously crowded. Wait a minute. Do they even deliver the mail on holidays? in December. There's multiple holidays. Right. So it's are, gonna be spread out all plus, throughout December. If people are sending Christmas cards, they could send them in early December or in mid-December, right? But tax day is a day, right? Yeah. We know tax day is one day. And a day. lot of people wait till that filing day. I did this past year. Not a good move. You feel it? Are you feeling that, tax day? This is what day? struck out to me. And you you had the same instinct. So I'm, I think I'm we're gonna it. put all of it on a day in April. 40,000 on a day in April. All right, put all your money on a day in April. At this point, this being the last question, we offer you a final fact about this question. Okay. This fact is not meant to change your mind. It will simply give you the opportunity to do so if you choose. We're trivia guys. We like as much information as we can get, so bring, bring it on. on. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna give you the fact, and then we're gonna give you 60 seconds to talk it over. Okay. okay. The final fact is, on its busiest day, the U.S. Postal Office will handle more than 830 million pieces of mail. Talk it over. We're going to give you 60 seconds if you're going to change your mind. Okay. 830 million is a huge number, right? Yes. We've got 
Taxes have to be filled out by each individual person, and we got at least 300 million people in the United States, right? Right. Taxes also have to be filled out by corporations and other entities like that, right? So there's multiple tax forms that are being delivered. We're talking about pieces of mail. Okay. okay. We're not talking about, like, persons. We're talking about pieces of mail. You might have to send multiple pieces of mail with your taxes. Here's the other thing I was thinking, though. People... I think I was just thinking cards in December before. Okay. Thinking cards, presents, right. coming in from all over the world. Right. So you felt like that question strengthened your opinion on April. It did. It did. 15 seconds. Because I agree yeah. with that. I didn't even think about corporations. I was just thinking a lot. about personal. There's a lot. And multiple times, multiple filings. We want to change move it. it. You need to do it want to keep it? I think we keep it. Let's keep it. Steve. Let's keep it. We're keeping it. We're good. All right, they're not gonna move it. All right! All right! Are we ready? Oh, boy. It's time to step up and see what drops. Okay. I'm gonna get on my lucky side. All right. I'm gonna get on my lucky side. All right. Come on, baby. All right, come on! And we wanna give these guys some money? Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. They need your help. They need your support. We've been on this ride together. They've made it this far. I'm sure a lot of you counted them out. They started with $1 million. They got kicked around. Did these two trivia kings actually manage to stop the drop? The drop stop them.